the one thing you gotta know about mobile home investing is it's not always gonna be glitter and gold. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, not. Yeah. You gotta get down and dirty, and you don't wanna get down and dirty. Ew, ew, ew. Yeah, you might as well go ooh, ooh, somewhere else because it's not. It's, it's work, it's, man. It's work. work. A lot of people talk about all the victories and a lot of you know the glitter and the glamour, but it's work, man. Yeah. Mobile home investing should not be this exciting <laughs> or this <laughs> like <laughs> drama. <laughs> you, but like, that just lets you know that even though we that was our first deal, we could have easily been. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. We on yep. deal four. We on deal yeah, number four, four now. You know? we're about to close <laughs> four more. Yeah, and it's, it's still trucking. And that's all with the kids with us. The kids in the car. Yeah. New, uh, new. One. Do I look? I look shiny, right? No, you good, John. Good, okay. Yeah, you good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do look shiny right there. Welcome back, everyone. John Fedro with uh, mobilehomeinvesting.net. And right now, I am very proud. I'm, I'm very happy to be here uh, sitting across the computer screen from uh, Andrew and Shaniqua. Thank you both for, be for being here. Thank yep. you. Eh? Thank you. Seriously. Hey, <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, we did this before. Let's keep it going. I know. Right? Right. <laughs> Uh, on today's, on, on, on this video, I want to talk about uh, deal uh, two, three, and four. That's okay. when we started working together more one-on-one. -on -one. But I also wanted to talk about deal number one, because I think that is a fantastic lesson. In all of my 18 years mobile home investing, mm -hmm. your deal number one, it always could have happened, but it never did. I don't know anybody that it's ever happened to. So folks mm -hmm. watching, stick around. Uh, because I think everyone should know about this and that, you know, it, mm. anyway, we'll get to that one. And hey, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Once you do, you'll be the first to see new videos as they come out regularly. Okay. Please, uh, before you started mobile home investing, uh, where did you come from? What real estate experience did you have? Just a quick little cliff, cliff notes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Good. Uh, well, um, I'm from New Jersey. Um, uh, come from a uh, small family, you know, mom, dad, three sisters, um, very close knit. Uh, so uh, didn't have a real estate uh, background growing up. Um, we just, you know, we were very religious. You know, I come from a very religious uh, family um, where we are Muslim, if you know, people don't know. Sure. Um, so, and you know, my, my father being involved in those different things, we were always attending community gatherings and helping with the community and feeding and stuff like that. That's how I grew up, you know, always activity with children and, you know, I had two for women, you know, very, very heavily involved in the community. Um, and well, in my um, Islamic community, um, we were very heavily involved in that growing up. Um, love cooking, always had a uh, passionate um, growing up and um, experimenting. You like to, you like to, what do you like to make? Um, well, breakfast. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Breakfast. I love to eat breakfast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that I, I don't know what it is about breakfast. I can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, yeah. yes. And sometimes we actually do it for dinner. <laughs> but yeah, I, <laughs> I love breakfast. Um, and that's actually one of my next goals to get that up and running is to have a, a breakfast truck. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, it's something about breakfast. I don't know what it is, but um, just cooking. I did a lot of trial and error. My dad will tell you, you know, a lot of pepper. So they was my guinea pigs growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I got so good. <laughs> they, they ate my food. <laughs> and they were, they were, they could critique it, but not much. They were just like, you know, just eat it and it would be full of pepper or full of whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of practice, you know, a lot of practice. Um, <laughs> you know, but I always had a entrepreneur mindset and didn't know it. I'm at 14, I started selling watches. Um, I started doing like, I actually had my own website I built from scratch. I was doing a henna artist and I would draw them. And it, 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 when I think about it, I forgot how depth I was in that because I actually started writing letters to nursing homes because I wanted to go to the elderly and do it for them for activity. You know, they have little activities for them. Yes. And I, my mom helped me and I had like hundreds of letters that I would post a mail out and send it to them and ask them if I can come and do henna art on the elderly. But 
I don't know why I didn't, didn't finish it, but you know, at that time I was 14, still doing school. Um, but that was the beginning of my, you know, entrepreneurship, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, selling candles. I love making candles. Oh, cool. Um, so I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have a background of real estate until I got married. Um, and then, and that's what, that took some time. I was still in school. I was going to school for to be a child, what was it, a teacher, mm -hmm. an assistant, a yeah, teacher assistant. Education. Yeah, early childhood education. Mm -hmm. And because I, I still have the niche, I can tell that I can teach children very well. Not my own too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't school with kids, but I, I can still see, I can have the passion, I, I can tell. But I, a lot of people growing up, oh, you should do kids, you should do kids. And I think I fell in that trap of people just telling me you could do kids. Mm -hmm. And it's not a trap, I don't wanna say it like that because I actually had my own daycare. Um, I was, my mom started it and we call it the eye care education. Um, in Arabic, we called it an inaya. And, you know, my mom started it, she did in her home. And then I started branching off with it. I started actually doing it in other people's homes. Um, I was, you know, so that was my beginning of entrepreneurship. That was the beginning of it. And I would do that. And, you know, I, I, while, I was like, oh, okay, I went to school for it. I'm like, you know, I got married and had kids. Like, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> it's just, this is seeing me right now. I just felt like I was following, but it was crazy. I had a really, a big vision. In the middle of the vision board was a daycare. It was sign language. It was, you know, it was my house and it was all these different things, but I was like, that's not what I'm looking for right now. Mm -hmm. And so then I had my third child, that's my son. And I started tapping into real estate. And that's when I started, you know, doing Flipman. And like, I was up early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning um, to, before my kids got up and I would just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in with it. And I was like, okay, it's time. I, I can't keep reading, so I'm taking action. Right. And I just jumped right in. I, what I mean, jumped right in. Started going, thought, driving for dollars. Um, pretty much the next day I was calling people, literally. And <laughs> started calling people. The lady, she late the, the first owner, she was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I'm like, did she say yes? This is, this is, this is unbelievable. Um, then the son got on the phone and his wife got on the phone. They thought I was scamming. Um, but I, like I said, I just immediately took action and everything. Since then, I just fell in love with it. I wound up getting sick, took a two years like off. And I said, it was always there. I know when I have passion about something, it's always going to be there. And I know I'm going to come back to it. I know when it's the right time for me. My, but my husband kept saying, go ahead, go, go back. You're doing so good. Go back. I'm like, no, not right now. I can't do that right now because I need to. Once I am, and when I, once I'm in it, I'm zoned in, and I can't stop. And you're not gonna be able to stop me. <laughs> so I was like, not yet. I'm, I'm getting there, and now here I am, mobile home investing. Can't stop. You were looking at single families before, right? And then it yes, right. okay. yes. And then your vision got turned over to mobile homes. Great job for being 14 years old or having that. I don't know if it's something inside of us or it's, if it's more of our parents doing it, but 14 years old, creating your own business. I think there's something to that as a child, if the, you know, I remember I created some businesses, they didn't do anything as a kid, you know, you're selling lemonade or something, yeah. but, but there's something to that versus, you know, the, exactly. anyway. yeah. exactly. Andrew, did you create any businesses as a kid or how did I? Um, as a kid, I, my my childhood was all was wrapped all into music uh primarily yeah i used to be into music real heavy as a child since i was like seven years old i used to rap i used to i used to write yeah <laughs> I, used to, I used to rap yeah let's so, hear um, it yeah, you want to okay. huh? you want to i, I can... let's hear it. yeah I, I used to rap but see you know I, that's my my whole childhood was, was 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 music i mean from seven years old probably all the way to I think I left it. I, I walked away from it at about maybe what twenty years old or something like that. Somewhere twenty, maybe twenty, twenty three. So I went to California. Even though I'm from Cali, I left Cali and came to the East Coast um, because my mother's from the East Coast. My father's from the L.A. the West Coast. He's from Compton, actually. So I mean, I had I had the East and West thing going on. But music was always that was my whole life uh, in, in my early years as a child. 
So it's kind of like entrepreneurship in a way because there's a lot of independence involved. Um, nobody's telling you when to, you know, when to write, how to write, you know, things of that nature. So you have a your own creative. You have to be creative and come up with your own material. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I guess it's kind. And I'm, I'm I've never liked working for people. Um, every even uh, well, when I was 16, I didn't mind, but ever since then, I really, I never really liked working with people. Like I kind of hate it. You know what I mean? I yeah, never understood it. Yeah. Man. So I just every job I had was just like this is not me right here. Every I never had found the job where I was like one one time I had a job doing construction work that I was working with a, a guy. Uh, he was an independent contractor, and that was the only time that I kind of felt like I could really see myself doing this. Huh. Um, but other than that. I never really wanted to work for nobody. So entrepreneurship is definitely, and I've always been a fan of financial literacy. Um, I've always really been, I, once I got turned on to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, ever since then, it was like a bug, man. When I got bit by that book, it was just, financial literacy has always been a, a great love of mine. You know what I mean? So building, trying to build wealth and build businesses and things of that nature. So um, this is definitely the way for me. You know what I mean? Why does it take that? You just happen to to stumble upon a book, you know, in 20s and your 30s. And that's how so many people are turned on to financial literacy or real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, who's I don't know. It's just like, why don't they it's either te teach that? Or exactly. 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 I would love to come. I, this is something this has been a project of mine. And I say a project, but I haven't even started it. I would love to create a mobile home wrap. And uh, right. I've never told anybody about that. And so I, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> uh, man, so what? You go? Are you going to wrap it, or you want somebody else to wrap it? No, I'll do it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to, you know, yeah, yeah like, be proud yeah. of it. But yeah, 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 yeah. In the mobile home park, just like yeah. you know, with the mobile homes behind me. Yeah, I can do that. Oh man, it's yeah, so crazy. Man. It's not yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> for fun. Oh, oh, <laughs> you gotta be doing that. Yeah. We're well, talking yeah, about the mobile home formula all in there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's gonna do. That'll right. go. That'll definitely go viral. That's for sure. Oh, it's, it's something. <laughs> you gotta see his body. Like, whole bunch of John Frederick going like this. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be crazy. Oh man, there's like a shuffle or some kind of mobile home shuffle to it. That'd be like yep. the yeah. dance. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, we'll talk man. about that afterwards. The mm. Uh, mm. thank you for that brief. Thank you for that brief background. Um, mm. On we started uh, more working one on one uh, over the phone and talking more regularly uh, around deal number two. I'd like to start right. there. Can you talk about uh, a couple deal? Um, how many deals has it been total so far for mobile homes? Well, it's be it'll be number four tomorrow. We're supposed to close on this on this one. This two bedroom, two bathroom. Uh, we had a pre closing with the dude today. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. he came out for the second time to look at it, and he uh, he he's, he knows everything that's wrong with the home, so he's aware of the little issues we had. We had an issue with the roof. Um, he said that's the first thing you want to do is put a new metal roof on there. So he said he got a good deal for like around two thousand dollars to put a new metal roof on there. Um, so that lets us know that he's aware of the little issue that was up because he can see the road roofing up there, the little couple pieces of road roofing you can see it, you know, from the ground actually. So that's a good thing that he he knows what's going on with the home and he. Uh, so that'd be number four. Yeah. The roof, it's all metal except for that one rolled asphalt part. Or? Well, it's it's all metal, but they just put they just put the real roofing over where they thought the, the leak was at. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh, I know. Yeah. I, I know just what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you well, know, hopefully, um, let's work backwards it. then that's number four. Uh, right. how did, how'd you get into it? And then what should the, uh, do, what repairs did you make? And then what should the exits, what's the exit strategy on, on number four on this one here. Okay. This one here was, this is the second deal we did in this park, you know? Um, so this one here, it was overpriced. Um, honestly, we really didn't want to give them what they wanted for it. It was asking, who was they asking? They started the at um, 10. Yeah, it started at 10,000. 10, and uh, we we started with them, I think it was like 2,000, we started with them. Uh, he went back up to, I think, to seven. Yeah. 
Uh, then uh, we went to 35 and he, I think he went to six. I said, oh God. So we met, a, we met, a, <laughs> we met, we met in the middle, middle. We met in the middle five. of 5,000, which is what I, I think that's what they really wanted to do. You exactly. know, close yeah. at 5,000. It was still overpriced yeah. and we probably shouldn't have bid on it. But when you don't have a lot of deals, you know, coming your way per se, and that's for, that's our fault that we didn't have a lot of deals coming our way because we got slowed down on deal number three. Deal number three slowed us down because mm -hmm. we was doing the work on the mobile home. We was physically doing the work. We was at that mobile home like every day yeah. trying to get it ready because it was so bad. It, it was in it was in it was in it was in good shape, like, but it had a bad layer over top. We had to peel that bad layer off and kind of get all that that rat poop out of there and all that stuff and mice and, poop, and rat poop. Plus, we didn't want to break our relationship with the park manager because we already told her we were going to purchase it. Yeah. And that had uh, a factor in it as well. Yeah. So this deal here, the home was in a fairly decent shape besides this. They had one area in the ceiling. That's the only thing I was concerned about. The roof, you know, a little, a little roof leak, you know, and we talked about that before. So we was trying to get that home for like 2,500, you know, 2,000 to 2,500. That's what we wanted to put and then put another 25 into it and be all in at around 5,000. You know what I mean? But because the uh, corporate didn't want to come down, we fought tooth and nail to get them from 10 to five, you know, but they didn't want to come down. So he's like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do this last deal with them. And after this one, we're not over, we're not overpaying for no more homes no more. You know what I mean? This, yeah, whatever we feel like the home is worth, that's what we're gonna pay. If they don't want to take our price, then we just gonna have to move on and let somebody else deal with it. You know what I mean? So, but the home is still in good shape. I mean, we put like maybe about a thousand into it. Yeah. Maybe maybe fifteen hundred all the maybe fifteen hundred. Yeah, no, nope. probably good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put maybe fifteen hundred into it. We had to that's get it clean. That's a lot rain. That's what the um. Turn the lights on. Yeah. Getting the carpet cleaned. Pressure wash. Pressure wash. Yeah. Like that's all included in that. Yeah. So we put about fifteen hundred into it. So we we we're all in at this point at about maybe about sixty five hundred. Mm -hmm. Um, we're not gonna make a lot off of this one, but we we settled on like at ninety five. Uh, what ninety two fifty? Ninety two fifty. Yeah, ninety two fifty. The guy he um when I first met him, he was very clear what he wanted to do, um and he kept me uh because he had two other appointments that he wanted to check out first. Um, before he purchased our home and I was like okay I'm fine but I'm hoping it's sold by then but okay um, but, but in the back of my head I was like I like this guy and because it's for his nephew and just because of how the neighborhood is and I felt that like they really fit in the home mm -hmm. and I like to do that I don't like to put anyone in the homes I, that's just I think that's wrong if you got a nice quiet neighborhood you gotta match it up with the neighbors in the neighborhood you just don't put anyone there exactly. and I'm very keen on that so I, I pay attention to that one. You look like you're going to be a hot mess. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I won't do it. Um, I, I'll figure out a way. Well, maybe something else is better for you guys. Or, you know, I, I, I will, because I feel like that's a part of me helping the community in the park. Um, so seeing how he would kept in contact with me, he kept saying, uh, I will, I'm going to call you this day. Um, I looked at the other one already. He kept, he didn't have to do that. And I, I appreciated that. So it kind of made me feel like, well, let me give him an ear, you know, let me keep going with him and see what happens. And that's when he hit me up on Saturday that he wanted it. And I was like, first he said like nine. I was like, oh, nine. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and, he, and he's already been approved by the park, too. Yeah. The park has already approved him. They approved him when he was looking at their homes because they was trying to sell him a home in the park. They showed him six homes Whoa. in that park. Yeah. Yeah, they showed him. He told us that. He told us that they showed him six houses, six mobile homes in that same park. Right. Exactly. But the and funny I, part about it is they only showed us three. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah I didn't so I, I don't know what, what's up with that. They don't they don't want to show us the, all the houses, but they showed him as a as a homeowner. They showed him all six and he turned all of them down. And he came back to the one we got. Yeah, he's he seen it on Facebook. So, yeah. And he hit me up. And there. That was a three, two is a three, two. Well, the one we got is a two bedroom. It's a two bedroom. You bought but it's only for, it's only for one person. His nephew and his dog. His nephew's dog. Do you have? And then you got this. Uh, this is the second one that you got directly from the park. You bought it from right. the park. Right. Mm -hmm. How'd the park get it back? Somebody abandoned it. Or? I don't know. We never asked that. Okay. Whoever it was, it must have just left because it was. Yeah. Uh, it looked like somebody was just living in there before we got it, okay. and it took it took really good care of it. They did some renovations in there. 
the neighbor they, just said he just left. Yeah, they yeah. upgraded. They, they they was working on that place. They was working on it, but then they got there was mice. That's the one with the mice and the. And no, that's the other one. Okay. Yeah, that's the first one we got in the park. Okay, that was the yeah. okay. So like they changed one room to sheet for to sheetrock. You know how you got the panel walls? Uh -huh. Yeah, they upgraded one room with the crown molding, and then they put the sheetrock in there. So they was really trying to really like bring it to you know make it look a little better. You know what I mean? And then they ran out of money or something like that, maybe. No, I think they they completed their project. They just they just moved. Oh. Yeah. Like they completed their, but they probably did it a little while ago, and they just took care of it. Yeah, you know I what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How uh, so? A little bit of, so a little over twenty five hundred on for profit when this one sells. Right. If yeah. the right. Guy buys it tomorrow. How long? Right. When? When did you close on that one? How long have you been in that one? Thirty um, days. Yeah, this, we this. died on the seventh um, okay. of last month. Nice. And today, the, so it'd be about thirty days. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good, honestly. Mm -hmm. Have has anybody said to you, "Hey, would you take payments?" Or, yeah, yeah, oh, oh plenty yeah. of that, John. Ooh. When we I, start doing, when we start doing the formula, the mobile home formula, the actual formula, I, that's we can't wait to really dig into yes. the actual, oh the actual formula. Like right now, we we're buying and selling. That's all we've been doing. We haven't had a chance to really implement the the, the formula yet. Yeah, so we haven't got a chance. But we got something in the, yeah, in the pipeline, though. Yeah. We got something in the pipeline. Okay. All that right. we may be able to actually utilize the formula with. Yeah, I'm excited. To get some, some payments. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. This, this two bedroom, you could have sold for, I mean, 18,000 plus a mm -hmm. uh, move-in fee or, I mean, more than, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but still, but, but this was in and out. You're proving yourself to the park. You're giving more confidence to yourself. You're learning more about repairs. You're doing, you said this a second ago, or not a second ago, but a little while ago, Andrew, you're doing these repairs on the homes, right? Yeah, yeah. Both, mm -hmm. both your, yeah, you all get, of them, yeah. And the kids are involved too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, they, in this one. yeah, they're involved too. <laughs> we try to get them to, you know, rake up the leaves on the outside. Yep. And they paint. They do some painting. Oh. And our daughter, our oldest daughter, she can break down a basic deal for you, you know, if she oh, had to. Right. She can kind of walk you through a basic deal from start to finish. She's yes. seven years old. <laughs> so well, she's eight years old. Yeah, <laughs> so we teach them. They learn it. They learn yeah, they she asks a lot of questions. Yeah. And so it lets me know she's really thinking and she's trying to apply the apply it. Yeah. Um, so and my son always tell me, we go to a mobile home. Yeah, they come yeah. to the home. The first thing I do, John, when we buy a mobile home, the first thing we do is clean the bathroom. That's the yes. first thing we do. We clean the bathroom and we get the bathroom user friendly. We, I, we put bleach in there, Ajax, because my kids got to use the bathroom mm -hmm. almost immediately. As soon as we get in there, they want to use the bathroom. So <laughs> We clean the bathroom almost, that's the first thing we do is we clean the bathroom, we get it so we can sit on the toilet and feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the first thing we do. And then after that, we, we after that, we'll find a room, we'll clean one room so they can go in the room and look at their, uh, uh, get on the laptop or if they want a tablet or play, oh play with their we, toys. They did school in the mobile homes while we were working on it. Like my husband will be working on there. On in the mobile home, and I like got the computers, chairs, desks, yes. paper. Let's go. <laughs> we in there. Yes. You okay. know, um, it is what it is. yeah, that's what we do. And they can make it done. Make it. You know? yeah. And the one thing I'm I'm proud about this one, especially the one the um lap on the one that we're supposed to close tomorrow, is that it took us seven days to get it ready, and that's because a previous buyer from the other third home was hooping and hollering to get a home. Mm -hmm. And we try to give her a home. She we we told her we'll have it done. We got it on Monday. We told her we had it done on Friday, and we worked our butt off mm -hmm. to get this home ready for her. She gets there. She's oh I love it. Da, 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 da. And I'm like oh okay. So we grind it. You know I was like we like what's your number? She like eleven. I'm like oh wow. Mm -hmm. This is crazy about the sales home. She's already in approved. This is great. Get the paperwork done. Got the bill to sell, everything. On our way to go to UPS to do notary. We this way, she's this way. Yeah, she flakes she on flakes. us. <laughs> <laughs> you're Literally. following her. Literally, you're driving she, together. She's following, yeah, she was following us. us. She was following us. Yeah, yeah, she flaked on us, but it's Literally. all good. And then you know they had a nerve to actually hit me up again. What she Yeah. The What'd son. she say after that? No, the sign. He hit, hit us about another home. Oh, another home. Yeah. Because, another because home. we're brokering two more deals for the park. Yeah. 
Right. So he hit me up for those homes. I said, oh, hey, aren't you a family that flaked on me? No, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, thank so, you. No, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, the, you deal, gotta, the wow. deal before that, the deal before that real quick was the, was the third deal, right? Yeah. That was number three. That one was a better um, a money deal. We bought that one for seventeen hundred. Yeah, yeah, we bought that one for seventeen hundred. Um, nobody wanted that one, um, mm. I, and they had two of them. They offered us two homes. One was seventeen, and one was fifteen hundred. So two thousand. Huh? It was two thousand. Well, she no, it was fifteen. Did she raise it up? She, I think she might have. Yeah, it was at fifteen, and then she raised it. Up. Then she raised yeah. it up to two thousand. Mm-hmm. So we was going. We was planning on getting both of those. The one for fifteen hundred, because the first number she gave was was fifteen and seventeen. Yep, yep. Then she raised the one at fifteen. I think she raised that to two thousand. <laughs> but anyway, we were going to get both of them. Um, but we ended up closing on the one at seventeen hundred. That's the one with all the rat, the rat poop in there, and the mice poop. Yeah. That one was just oh man, that was. You were uh, scared going there. Yeah, it was very. It was scary in there, man. You know. But anyway, so we got in there. And we cleaned that mobile home. We cleaned the we cleaned the hell out of that mobile home. <laughs> it was actually so we, a I mean, home, I tore the man. I tore the carpet up, and that was a three bedroom. That one was a three bedroom, two bathroom, right? That was a huge single wide. You know what I'm saying? So we 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 but the so we pulled all the carpet up out of there, threw all that out. We got we bought a wet vac. We spent about three hundred dollars at Home Depot just on material and all kind of cleaning supplies and stuff. And we got in there. We was going to pay somebody to do it. But we was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it. We got in there. We cleaned it up real good. Vacuumed everything up real good. We we had bleach. We had uh, we had everything, man. Everything. Pine saw. We had, uh, what's Box that, vinegar. Food. We had vinegar. We had we had all kind of stuff to uh, wipe the walls down, the ceiling fans, the ceiling, everything. You know, so we cleaned out really good. Then we laid new carpet in there. I put the carpet down myself. That was the first carpet job I ever did. Yeah. too so we put how'd you learn down. that i just did it man i just like yeah i just freestyled it yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you do with the pad and everything right or yeah with the pad and everything okay. yeah and the pad was all patched all up man i had pad i had different <laughs> pad it was it was crazy man yeah, but crazy. but we wanted to give them a clean home at least exactly. it was clean it was yeah. really really we actually clean. put curtains up we made it look nice. like a home yeah. so it can look like something when people were seeing it so they, oh, okay, it has some potential. You can see it, it looks like a home. You yeah. The little vases with flowers in there. Um, so it's to make it look like something. And we sold that one for 10,000 um, cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's so, a, okay. Yeah. Right. So we put, yeah. So we put about maybe 2,500 into it, I want to say. Yeah. All together yeah, with lot think, rent, with the lot rent and everything included, because we paid the hour, lot rent uh, twice, twice on it. We paid two storage fees on that one. Yeah. So it's 210 and then 210. So 420 the lights, all together. We turned the lights on with them. We had to have lights yeah, on. Yeah, we turned one. the light, turned the electricity mm-hmm. on so we can work in there comfortably. Yeah. But that That's... one, that was the danger zone, though. Where? Oh, I fell still... in there. Oh, the, uh, the ramp. The ramp. The ramp yeah. <laughs> yeah. Painting. You fell through it? Painting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The ramp, the ramp yeah. has some soft spots yeah. in, in uh, outside, the outside ramp leading yeah. to the house. Yeah, the yeah, power wash guy did too. Yeah. I felt so bad, man. The wood was rotted yeah. out. Y'all okay? Yeah, there was some spots that were rotted out. So I wasn't trying to replace that though, man. Mm-hmm. That was like we put a piece of plywood over certain spots, mm-hmm. you know, so we can feel, you know, safe walking up and down. Of course. Um, but but I was just gonna tell the new buyer, listen, you gotta replace the ramp or either mm-hmm. or either replace some of the wood on the ramp. Yeah, that mm-hmm. one was yeah, that one was nasty. Yeah, Dirty that was refrigerators. Like, I couldn't do the refrigerators. He did that. I was like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no. Um, I didn't know how you were doing. I was like, man, I'll be vomiting right now. Yeah, that was a that it was, was a, mold. It, it was, was mold. That was a it tough was job. Black mold. Yeah, it was tough. That, the that third was a, bill was that was a tough job. Being there sometimes. I think one time we was twelve o'clock at night. Yeah, we, we stayed. stayed there. We, we put a lot of hours into that house. A lot of hours into yeah. getting there ready, but we got you know we we sold it for ten cash. So yeah. y- y'all are real thoughtful on who you place into it, Shanika. When you said that, uh, I. Uh, that really means a lot. Like you don't just put anybody into the home. You don't no. want to sucker somebody in there. You want no. to be the right fit for the neighborhood. If the manager is a creep or some weird person, you you tell the like, hey, manager's a weird person. Like you're you're honest about it. What right. what repairs did you not do on that third one? Because you sold it cash as is. Was there still stuff needing to be done? Or yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. On the third one, uh, the deck still needed to be repaired. 
Um, the kitchen sink needed to be repaired. It was like, if you twist the sink certain ways, you know how it leaks out the back. If you yeah. twist it certain ways, yeah, it was one of those sinks. So we had a bucket underneath the sink. You know what I mean? Um, what else was it? Uh, the bed, the bathroom sink underneath the U-trap was leaking under there. So we wasn't, it was a lot of small stuff, you yes. know, a lot of, a lot of small, but that stuff adds up. You know, if you go to Home Depot and you go buy three new sinks and, and, and five new traps and all this stuff, that stuff is going to add up, yeah. you know, so. Um, we had grew, we we had uh, two strong buyers on the home before we even fixed it up. Yeah, they was okay with it. Yeah, like they that. was okay with it. They was going to deck the whole kitchen out. They were, they had this whole plan. Mm-hmm. And you know, the one lady, she did her application and stuff like that. And that's something that's going to hold us up because we were allow buyers to dictate our move. Um, so we, we kind of stopped when the first buyer wanted the home as is, um, I mean, it was still bare, no car on the floor. Um, <laughs> we just, only all we really did was clean. Right. Um, and we were just starting to paint and stuff like that. And we kind of stopped. We were like lagging a little bit. Yeah. See what, when she's going to get approved. Um, and we helped that lady from the, to the top to the bottom because she had judgments on her internet, on her name and stuff yeah. like that. And she just didn't want to fight no more. Um, so we learned with yeah. that that it's not sold until it's sold. Exactly. And we'll never let a buyer dictate our deal again. Like it's not. So we got that money in hand. Like even with this guy tomorrow, she told him today, yeah. listen, we're not taking it offline. It's going to stay online and we're going to continue to shop it. We're supposed to meet him at the bank tomorrow morning at nine o'clock at Chase Bank. Tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, and then we go into the tag place after that. Yeah, we don't um, leave them. We don't leave them alone. We complete the deal until we walk out of that DMV yeah. or tag place. Yeah. yeah, we don't leave. And sometimes you even go to the office. Like, hey, you sit down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it all depends on the situation, but yeah, we don't. The, leave. the second deal was a disaster, though. I don't even want to talk about that one. Yeah, please. But you got to talk about it now after yeah, that. Yeah, intro. Know, right. Yeah. <laughs> That second deal was a disaster. It was kind of like a, it was almost kind of like a, like a bleed off of the first deal to a certain degree because, and the reason why I'm saying is because it had the same corporate owned, the first deal we did, it was owned by the same company, major company as the second park, even though they was in two different, they was in two different counties and in two different towns, but it was one corporation. We didn't find that out until the second deal. We found out that, oh, they own this park too. Yeah. You know, but so one, it was split in half. One was Henry County, and one was Clayton County. We were still in Clayton County, right? With that particular mobile home, it was literally split in half. That yeah, so that deal, that second deal, we kind of got trapped into that deal because yeah. we came in, we came into that deal when they were somewhat part uh, investor friendly. The, the park manager was somewhat investor friendly when we when we first started working on the deal, mm-hmm. but yeah. the, so by the time we completed the deal. They had switched park managers and the new park manager was wasn't really investor friendly, but she said y'all can go ahead and complete the transaction. So once we completed the transaction and got locked in, they turned all the way not investor friendly on us. Do you think she was getting you in that she knew what she was going to do beforehand? She was trying to put like make your life difficult or why do you think that she it wasn't from the corporate it was it was at her level, at the manager. It level. was, it was, it was at both levels because she was levels. a, she was a puppet. She yes. was a new, and she was a new, a so new he, park manager. She didn't really know. So she was only doing what they told her to do, basically. Yeah. Right. And only reason she, I think, she let us complete the transaction because we were so adamant about completing the transaction. We told her, listen, uh, th- these guys already, they're about to, they done moved their furniture out of the house already. We can't turn away from the deal now. And she was like, well. I guess you guys can go ahead and complete your transaction. It was more so one of those type of things. But once but I we completed the seller it, there, everything. Yeah, the seller talk came in the office and talked to the park manager everything. too. Yeah. You That's know, true. so everyone knew what was going on. But she once clearly that we was in once we completed that transaction, man. Oh man, we was trapped in that park. I felt trapped inside the park. No, we were never trapped. I don't, I don't That's how I felt because we couldn't even. Yeah. It was just crazy, John. I mean, I we don't even have the time to break that one all the way down, man. <laughs> but I mean, one thing I gotta say, I we we did even though it was a lot of intel and it was very stressful. At the end of the day, we got out of it, yes. And that's the key was, and I, I made sure I got out of that. Oh yeah, that was because all. That was all. She, her. <laughs> I dealt with the lady before, right, on the first deal, and I was hoping I was still gonna have a good uh, response with her. 
And once I met somebody that we feel my back, my, my back is against the wall, you're going to lose because I don't like to feel that way. And that's what happened. I mean, we did, I was talking to people that lived in the mobile home five years ago. Yeah. And it went back uh, another five years ago. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> I literally found people. Oh. I, you want, yeah. Literally found these people. It was crazy. The one lady that was, I had a home on Facebook advertising, she contacted me. She said, this looks just like the mobile home I had. And I'm like, huh? And I just kind of engaged a little bit. And she was like, yeah, I sold it. But she didn't tell me who sold it to that at that time yet. And I was like, oh, wow. Really? It's a small world. And I was like, so we can just, I'm like, man, how am I getting out of this? This lady's not letting me sell my home. She told me I had to do a Thomas lease. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Y'all are crazy. Y'all think I'm going to do that. So I said, you know what? Let me ask her who bought it. Because I can't, on the title, it kept saying this particular person's name. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we ain't going to find him. He probably deceased somewhere. Ain't nobody's going to find him. The, the other previous uh, buyer that the seller bought it from, she wrote on the wrong part of the title. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be insane. How in the world am I going to find this person? Oh yeah, I did. I found him. Literally talked to him on the phone. Got he helped me get to, you know, get Great to give himself home. <laughs> you know, for the folks that are listening, the reason why people might be thinking, well, why are you going back? Why do you have to go back? Why do you have to go back five or ten years? It's because the park manager, didn't she have some kind of, like she was trying to put your feet to the coals and then, you know, you, the person has to come in here. Exactly. We have to see them. And they, like exactly. that just yeah. ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. And the, a manager changing or the, 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 the parks, like you, you buy the mobile home and then the park sells and the new management doesn't like us. That's for, for the folks listening, that's rare. But mm -hmm. if anyone could find it, it's the book. Right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular court, this particular uh, corporation, they change park managers like you change your underwear, man. Which is a bad <laughs> sign. That's a bad sign for corporate. Yeah. That that lets you know that corporate is something is not right. No, my bad. Oh. My bad. That's the uh, you got to plug that. That lets you know that something is not right upstairs with corporate because um. They shouldn't be changing park managers like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're changing park managers left and right at a lot of their parks because they own like 11 parks in this county. Oh, wow. In this particular county. And all of these parks they have, they have issues with the park managers. They flip and flop with park managers all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. And I wasn't going to let her win. Yeah. yeah. So you said something uh, before, Shaniqua, about if, you know, shady parks do shady business or if they're shady yeah. managers that's what it was like if they're shady managers yeah. you're talking to shady people i forget exactly and the people said it sadly but even the people that's in the in the park because we had a wholesale built in that same park in shady yeah it was shady, it was oh, shady. And she was shady too oh, wow. yeah the wholesale deal was shady yeah. too so yeah. it was a shady yeah. so i, I feel that well, you gotta you gotta be in a little halfway decent park and a halfway decent manager, park manager, to be able to get a halfway decent deal, you know. Um, yeah. So it makes it makes the experience better when you're dealing with a park manager like that for no reason. Yeah, at for that no point. reason at all. Especially when you go from A to Z, explaining everything. Like I still explain everything. I, I explain too much. We've been very transparent from 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 the beginning of our mobile yeah. home investing. We've been very transparent with the park managers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, get, I got to yeah. a point that I, like I said, I had to call corporate. Yeah. And I talked to the the manager, the regional manager of that park. Yeah. I, I was like, no, it's not, it's not happening. And that's what I did. The As mobile home investors, we don't, there's not that many like, uh, we don't got to deal with banks usually. We don't got to mm -hmm. deal with title companies or underwriters some states, but mo for most of the, like most of it, we're dealing with the buyer, we're dealing with the seller, and mm -hmm. we can make sure that things are on the up and up to some extent, but that manager, they can be the ones that are, they lie, they, they talk sweet to your face and then they're lying to you or they're talking crap about your home to people that come in or mm -hmm. they're like throwing you under the bus, like some crazy stuff that just doesn't often happen, but... Mm -hmm. And this is a situation where where yeah. that but didn't. and this one thing I want to say, even though that park manager 
was still nasty to me. She was not very nice. Um, literally, like literally, cold shoulder. I still came. I still came in that off of my head up high. Like I, I got when certain things make me uncomfortable. I get very nervous, and I had to tell myself I like what I'm doing before I even walked in the office. I like what I'm doing. I like what I'm doing. I like what I'm doing. And then when I did that, my confidence grew, and I'm coming in there. Here's donuts. <laughs> Okay, oh, here's some little trinkets I got from the dog store, barkers, pens, tacks, here you go. I still did my job because well, at the end of the day, it's not about what she's um, throwing at me, it's about what I'm giving to her. And guess what, John? That park manager is not there anymore. No. <laughs> so, we, so look, check it out, look, check it out though. We started the deal with one park manager yeah. that she ended up getting fired. Then we, then we, we, we closed the deal with the with another park manager, I, I think she, I don't know if she got fired or left. She probably got fired. And when I called there recently just to check. I said, I said, you know what, Shaniqua, I want to call and see if the same park manager is there. It's another park manager. She said, no, so and so is not here anymore. She's not with <laughs> us anymore. So that's three park managers that we seen, and it's probably about no, six. Four. Remember the oh, four lady. park managers. I'm we sorry. When I first when I first found out about that park, it was a Spanish lady there. She was the park manager, and she right. was she was very investor friendly. Yes, she was investor friendly. That's what made us go. Yeah, she was investor friendly. She was okay with us being there. So four park managers, and that was less than a year, way less than a yes. year. That was like six to nine we only, months. We started with you in April. Yeah, four park managers we seen yeah. at the same park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's just yeah. it's yeah, it's corporate. Good. That corporate uh. Have, would you ever want to be a park manager? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't mind because that's where all the deals is at, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all the deals come through. We got one park manager. She got her hands wrapped around the park. She got yes. all the deals in her hands. Oh she got all goodness. the deals. She's an investor. She's okay. an investor too. Yeah. So, I, but I still call her. We call her all the time just to touch base with her. How you doing? You know, yada yada. We bought her some donuts before. You know what I mean? Yeah. We still keep in contact with her Even though because one no day deal. I know one day she's gonna say, you know what? You know what? I got something for you. Here you go. Here go a yeah. bone. Here, let me throw you a little bone. Yeah. Let me throw you guys have been keeping in contact with me. You've been nice to me. This and that. I got something for you. Believe you know. So that. we'll be talking about us, that. It doesn't again. hurt us. To, it doesn't hurt us to call her or or use Skype broadcast to call whatever. It doesn't hurt us to just shoot her a little message here and there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And it's a very nice part. That's probably an eight part for sure. Oh, yeah. I think it's an eight part for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a very nice part. So yeah. And they're investor friendly and they let you do payments in that part. Oh, if you can get in there. If you can get in, that's the yeah. thing. You can get in, if you can get in. She got all the deals. Right. I wonder if she's friendly up until that point. And then she, once she feels maybe money's being taken away, people change sometimes. Yes. Well, she offered it. She had one home. She had one home that she tried to sell us for 8,000, but it was, it was overpriced. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was well overpriced, but we was going to buy it at that point. We wanted to, this phone the battery is dying. Oh wow. Yeah, we wanted to buy it anyway. We kind of wanted to buy it anyway, just because just to kind of get in the park, because we know we could have sold a home for by at least twenty thousand. Um, well at least that's what we believe. We could have sold it's a very nice park, you know. So, you know, we'd have probably put a couple grand into it and sold it for uh and sold it for about twenty thousand. But uh, we ended up uh we ended up passing on the deal and uh, I just keep in contact with her uh, for now. So you might be right. She might turn unfriendly at a certain point once we get into the park. Um, but, you know, we had to cross that bridge to see, you know what I mean? That's not a bad little, could be a bad little profit. I mean, obviously double your money and get in for eight, do some more, sell it for 20. I mean, the prices of, of mobile homes are going up uh, in many areas. Right. Uh, people with cash, people will, will, will pay those, those, those higher prices, even, mm -hmm. even for cash. Mm -hmm. Shaniqua, this is a crash course in, in, this business is like a crash course in people. When you said that you, when you feel like not attacked, but you, uh, you feel nervous, you still mm -hmm. went in there with your, with your, with your held, 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 held high. Like she didn't get completely in your mind. You know, you didn't give up. You didn't blame yourself or like, that's just, that says a lot. I mean, just experiences like that over and over and over again, that just give us more confidence and thicker skin. And, yeah. yeah. 
Great yeah. job, seriously. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to go to that park no more. Yeah. 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 I remember he was like, so we just host. I was like, oh, no, no, no it's a nightmare. I really don't even want to deal no. with the cell building. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you. And you know what's so crazy, John? The last thing I'm going to say about this part, about that particular deal, which was deal number two, the mobile home that we purchased is still in the same person's name who lived in there, what, 10 years ago or five years ago or 10 years ago. We didn't we didn't switch the title over in our name because the someone had signed in the wrong spot. Right. So we just left it like that. We was going to get a bonded title, but the bonded title was was too expensive, you know, so. How do we get out of that one? Oh, we, uh, we just had, you know, like I said, I look for right people for the right home. Right. And I found the right person because I had two people that I literally had one. I, I he was this guy was talking about he was ready to buy it. We were really at the Chase Bank ready to buy it. He comes talking about all oh, my money ain't all the way there in or something. And I'm like, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and I had her, that family in the back, like, just hold on. I know you have issues with the application, but Person don't worry. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I got, I had her tucked to the side, like, oh, I gotta have these two people. No, just because, just it's gay, somebody flim flam, like he did. I was like, you know what? Maybe, you know, this one may not be for you because I can't wait that long. And, you know, maybe something else will come up and, you know, I can help you. Call her and me. No, my husband actually was on the phone with her, telling her, no, come meet us. They came, they seen the home. I, I seen her, um, I talked to her plenty of times to, uh, throughout um, mm -hmm. our dealing and stuff like helping her with the application. She couldn't, for whatever reason, she couldn't do it. And I told her, don't worry about it. We're going to keep the can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Just get down. laughs> you know, just don't worry. And they, they was like, okay, good. And she, mind you, she lived in that park years ago. Yeah. She already knew about the park. So the, so the lease is still in the guy's name that was living in there, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, the lease is still in his name, but the title is not. The title, the title was not in his name, no. Yeah, the parks, the park seems to be okay, okay with that. They don't yeah. care, man. They, that's why they, they the lot rent. I don't even know why they gave us such a problem because they don't even they don't care who who's the lease. Yeah. Right. They you know so the care. lease is still yeah. in his name. Yeah, yeah. We, and we I got the title. We got the title out of his name. We was able to get the title. We was able to pull some strings and get the title out of his name. Yeah, but the lease. Is still in his name because if we would have switched the lease out of his name, the park would have said, We're not investor friendly. We told you guys we're not investor friendly, so you can't have nothing to do with selling a home in this park. Yep. So we just left the lease as is and just sold it to the, the new buyer. And we let them know, listen, you don't even have to give them a down payment, just come in and start paying a lot rent. Yeah. So that's what happened. They was okay with it. We was okay with it, and we just left that like that. Yeah. That's right. How silly that the park knew what was going on but if it doesn't change the lease uh the person's in the lease's name doesn't change out from that guy's name even though he hasn't been there for five years and the buyer was happy about that wasn't the oh, buyer yeah. oh yeah of, absolutely yeah, okay, yeah. absolutely no but the crazy part, it, but it could have been that's the thing that's the that's what want, everyone has to understand that park managers just they can be it very hard on you and you have to be patient in this business because it could have. I had the buy, but I had the person that lived in that home ten years ago on the phone for her right. to talk to him. She didn't and want to talk. She to didn't him. want. It. She was she was flabbergasted when she figured out I found him. Yeah, she didn't want to talk to she him. She didn't want to talk to his him. His brother was dead though. His brother's name was on the title too. Yeah. So, so we had to go down. We had to go downtown to, oh, the, yeah, death, to the death. We had to go get a death certificate. <laughs> I forgot about and, that. And part. bring that just in case we had yeah. to have the death certificate for his brother because his brother's name was on the title as well. You got all that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She was just and trying on, to. Mind you, I had a buyer before and they wrote on my title. And I, I, it was a lot of twists and yeah, turns that, that with deal, that. that too. <laughs> I remember we got creative <laughs> with that one. Yeah, we came on top though at the end of the day. <laughs> that, that, that yeah, we point. made. Hey John, yeah, I was man. ready to get at home back to the park, man. You know how these people get home back to the park and run? That's I was about to say, here with your keys. That's you know, not you, you know. You can have it. You can have it because I looked at it like we only paid seventeen hundred for the home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, we paid well seventeen, and we had to pay uh, the that one month's back lot rent. So it was like yeah. twenty something all together, twenty twenty four hundred or whatever, or something like that all together. No, but, it, it was thirteen, right? 
Because okay, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's it was right. like seventeen. So all together, seventeen all together. But the buyer got like thirteen, and the park got that the the rest of it, which was that back mm-hmm. one month back lot rent they owed. Exactly. But man, I was so stressed out over that deal. I was ready to give that house back to the park and say, "Y'all can have it. It's not worth. It. It's not worth it." But she was like, "Nah, I don't want to give it back. I want to hold on. We're gonna find a buyer for it, and we found a buyer. We did find a buyer." And yeah, and we sold and we sold it without the title because the title was in the mail. So we that buyer bought it with no title, a just a bill of sale. And then they trusted us. And then we came back like two weeks. As soon as the title came in the mail, I called them and we went to the tag place and switched it right over. Yep. Like, yeah. Did you get a lot of people giving you kind of weird looks, or did, did people not oh, yeah. like that about the title? They thought you absolutely. were trying to. Oh yeah, sell absolutely. Them or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Did yeah. you have to sell it for a bit of a lower price because of that, or no? It, I think so. I, I yeah. think so. I think we kind of play with the price a little bit because electricity was messed up in there. They had some right. type of electrical issue, and then the title, yeah, re, re, uh, re, recurrent, a, re, uh, a relay, recurrent relay. Something was messed up in there with the electricity. So between that and not having the title, and me just wanting to get away from that part, <laughs> we just like, look, man, you can just, you know, you can yeah. go ahead and have it. So we made a little bit of money off of it. He was happy at the end of the day. We knew we could get more to the type of buyer. Mm-hmm. And I, but we was like, you know what? We just want to be done with it. Like, yeah, you know, be done with it. He was, they were both easy going with the whole situation. Yeah. And I, I was like, that. you know what? Take it. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, so, yeah. They yeah. were happy about it. Yeah. They're yeah, they was happy. They're still yeah. there. Do you still, do you ever, do you ever they check still in there. on folks? We talked to him the other day. We yeah. texted him and told him about this three bedroom he got because he exactly. said he needed a little bit more space. And he's wanna, he wanted yeah. to take it out. He's yeah. Like, so we're going to get him to come by and, and take a look at one of these wholesale deals that we're working on right oh. now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he said if he likes it, you know, I'm gonna get it. That's what he said. Yeah, oh, he told me if he likes it, he said, you know, I'm gonna get it. I was like, see, look at that because we had such a good experience, uh, with that deal, you know, and now he's you know, he's interested in buying something else. So, we may have to help him sell that other one. We may, even though I really don't want to deal with that part, Mm -hmm. we may have to help him sell that other one he's in now after he purchases this uh, new one from us yeah you know what i mean but and it would be not you'd be happy about it more happy if it wasn't in that particular part yeah yes. but we, we would do it from a distance though we would kind of just do that one from a distance man you know because he's on board he you know i yeah exactly i feel what exactly. you're saying exactly. that i mean he great job keeping in touch with people to get i mean to solicit some referrals or testimonials from them and then also mm-hmm. maybe referrals if they see anybody in the park or they can recommend you and or just tip you off about something maybe not that part but yeah yeah so the great job so, okay so that that's uh we talked about four number three number two those are i mean those are people that you've helped people that you've placed mm-hmm. in those homes memories are going to be created from what from what y'all did uh, right right yeah uh, <laughs> and the first deal well we were working together i remember on that on the second deal uh, right. specifically, we were talking a, a, a lot. Um, and before that, on your first deal, yeah, we were, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did we come up? How did we find each other? And then we were just emailing. You weren't, yeah. we weren't working together or you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we was emailing, uh, we was emailing and well, I, we, I found you, but I told you before, I found you because of Jay and Samira. Uh-huh. We, we ran across them and then uh i was so curious about uh who they learned from i wanted to know who they who they learned from i was i was so curious about so we was kind of watching a lot of their videos and one day i saw an old video it was like a podcast that you guys did uh-huh. and and i could tell it was older it was an older video that you guys did and and you were interviewing them yeah. so once i saw that i said this is the guy that they learned from right here that's when i first saw you yeah yeah. One, yeah yeah that's when i first saw you and once i once i saw that i looked in the bottom of the notes of the uh youtube it was on youtube <laughs> and i saw john fedro and the channel and then i started looking at the, your website and things of that nature and i was like i wonder how much this guy charged you know what i mean how, how oh we can work with goodness. him you know what i mean so I'm, you know we he, went from I'm there scared yeah so i just basically just started kind of like <laughs> just following everything you had every all of your videos i started looking at all the videos and finding all the different stuff i said this guy is amazing you know what i mean so yeah. From there, once I found out that we might actually be able to afford to buy, get into the mobile home formula, I was like, well, we might as well, you know what I'm saying? We might as well, you know, go this route because it's one-on-one mentorship. 
we can call this guy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? We were doing wholesaling houses at first before we even yeah. contacted you. Yeah. So I mean, I was like, this is this is what we need right here. We need yeah. to we need to have somebody that we can deal with in real time that, that, that we can call while we're on the porch of the mobile home or in the office and yes. just really kind of you know dig through this stuff. Real that talk. One was, that first one was so stressful that we knew if we're going to keep doing it, we had to have Yeah, we had to have somebody with us that would be one-on-one. -on -one, so not waiting, not yeah. email, not through messenger, yeah. no nothing. We needed something right then there. But man, that one had us so on edge that we thought cops coming to our house. Yeah. The, yeah. So. You look at home like, did, Oh, the first, the first, the first, yeah, first deal. we'll yeah, talk first about deal. that. Okay. But yeah. real talk, that is what Pete, when I got started 18 years ago, I had, I still have mentors, not mobile home mentors back then. Cause I didn't have any mobile home mentors, but that's, I was bugging my, my mentor like every day. I mean, maybe not bugging, but like calling. And if you're doing things, if you're taking action daily, just like Jeremy and Samara, they are, I mean, they, they are action takers. And we were talking every day, I mean, on their mm -hmm. deals and learning stuff and they making mistakes and overcoming stuff. You need that. Not like an yeah. email or, um, yeah. and uh, by the way, you haven't uh, watched or subscribed to their channel, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, working with them. I and mean, that, that's, that's what people need is that one-on-one -on -one real talk. I want to see 50 to hundred pictures of every home you, you go through. You know, right. it's that day in, day out uh, support. And on the first deal, you you had some education. And I know we were talking back and forth for, on email, but that takes like a day or more to right. like correspond well, back and forth. So we didn't have any education. Well, we had, oh, we, had we did, we, we went through the course. We, no. Yeah, we did, the, did yeah, that's yeah, right. We didn't have no education. When we, we first got into the deal, we, right. first got into the deal, we were trying to look at it like it was a, a house. A house yeah. And we were helping oh. that house. Yeah. It started as being a wholesale, wholesale deal. And yeah. it turned into oh. um, a fix and flip. Well, not even really fix, but it, it turned into that. We bought it. Um, and in that process, we was like, well, we, we have no paper. We, we don't know what we're doing. And mm -hmm. that's when Mobile Elite came involved. Yes. Ah, uh, in the middle of that deal. In the middle of that deal, yeah. And they was like telling us, stop doing the deal. Yeah, you yeah. need to go and learn first. Yeah, and I'm in like, we in the middle of the deal. We can't stop. So, so, yeah. so we was able to get some help from them with that first deal. And so between, between you, you know, between yeah. me emailing you, and me talking to uh, to us talking to Byron and Sharnice, we was able to get some some help from yeah, both of y'all. Both of y'all, yeah, literally. Both of y'all. But being as though we had already got the, their course, they was they was giving us some voice messages back and forth. But it still was a little. Yeah, it was still. Fun. It was a little. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't like being able to get on the phone and be like, you know what I'm saying? It was. Yeah. It was a little different. But it helped out. It helped yeah, out yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, we sat down and we you know we, we went through all the materials, so it, it helped us yeah. out. You know, yeah. helped us out a lot let's this deal this is something i want to talk about if we could because the uh this is like from the very beginning 18 years ago this is something that i knew could happen but i've never let it happen to me i've never heard it actually happening to anybody where this guy did the old kind of switcheroo on you and right purposefully yeah. right was illegal so yeah a plea, what happened or could you mind talking about that for the first deal yeah uh you want to go oh, man she, so, found, she found well, the deal. Yeah, she long found story the deal. short, yeah. uh, like I said, we were wholesaling houses at first. I mean, we were going hardcore with that day in, day in, in I mean, hundred, calling yeah, hundred houses, you know, dollars, driving dollars, dollars, dollars yeah. with houses. And then I was on let go. Don't go on let go, people find mobile homes. So we're going to let go. Mm -hmm. And I um, seen it and I'm like, I thought it was a house. I never, I would heard about mobile homes. But, you know, I was like, oh, it's another little house. Let me let me hit him up. So I hit him up and he had up there for 10. And I'm like, this is a tiny house for 10. No way. <laughs> and, you know, with wholesaling, they tell you cut him, chop him in half. And I'm like a big, I'm like all all on that with that chop in half stuff. <laughs> even, even to the, whatever we buy, chop it in half, you know. Mm -hmm. Nope, don't give him the whole thing. Um, so I said, oh, about five. He said, and he said, yes. I was like, he said, yes. And I'm like, I mean, I'm going crazy. I said, he said, yes, we're going to go look at it. I went, we went the next, yeah, we were scheduled for the next day to go look at it. It was crazy. We didn't know what to dress, how to dress. I'm like, we supposed to look rich. Are we supposed to not? What are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Man. Yeah, I was like, oh, how are we supposed to look? He's like, I don't know. Just, just, get, just get, let's go. So we get ready to go. We go look at the house. I'm like, wait, this is 
this is different. I was like, no, there's a mobile home. Yeah. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I'm like, okay. Well, hey, it's a deal. Let's go. Let's go into so it. It's got, it got four contract. walls. Let's yeah, do we it. got it. We got <laughs> it under contract yeah. for uh, ooh, 35. 35. We got it under contract yeah, for 35. Five. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even know how to fill a contract out, man. No. We had we had one of Flip Man contract. <laughs> We didn't know what we was doing with that contract. It was a contract for a, a house, you know, yeah. for wholesaling houses, you know, for buyers and sellers. It was a buyer, buy and seller. It was a general agreement, buyer yeah. and seller agreement, but one one page. But so we kind of just filled it out in front of the guy and we kind of just kind of, you know, tur- you know, we filled it out in front of him. We gave him a dollar. I think I gave him like a dollar or ten. We're not going to five dollars. I think it's five dollars. I think yeah, I gave him five. So I'm going to give you five dollars so we can make it legally binding that, it, that we're going to buy the home. That we're going to uh, yeah. and buy the home. Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't tell him we was going to find a buyer for it. He yeah. thought we was going to buy it. But we told him, give us 30 to 45 days to close on a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we started shopping the home. You know, so he was just watching everything, you know, as we were shopping, he was just watching the buyer, people come through the home and we was like, yeah, we're going to show the home to some people because we don't want to have to pay the lot rent. So we're going to try to just bring yeah. somebody in to buy it from us almost immediately after we buy it from you type of thing. Uh-huh. We didn't you know? put the title on our name. Yeah, um, we didn't put the title on our name. I walk, We walked around with the title for about, for a while. We didn't wow. put the title on our name. That was a big mistake. Mm-hmm. You yeah. knew enough though to take the title. You got the contract signed, gave the five bucks. And you did you did you take the signed title then? Well, remember it started off as a wholesale, as a wholesale deal. deal. Okay. Right? And he started, he called he started us. calling us. Blowing the phone up. He needed some money back. He needed money back. Yeah, we told him all bag. we give him was twenty five hundred. Yeah, we well. told him all we give him. That was a big mistake. Man, it, it, when you don't have knowledge, man, it's you make so many Dangerous. mistakes, man. Yeah. Because yeah. that was a five hundred dollar mobile home. You know oh, what I'm boy. saying? At most, at most, I would say what a nine thousand, nine hundred to a thousand dollars being generous most. but just we didn't we didn't know that then we didn't know so we gave him 25 he's like look the best we, we knew can that do, enough we was like the best we can do is give you 2500 dollars man you know what i'm saying so he took the 2500 so the next day it turned it went from a wholesale deal to a to a fix and flip but the crazy part at that time you couldn't tell he was doing nothing yeah we so, so happy. yeah we was happy <laughs> we gave him the 2500 yeah, yeah, yeah. no part, don't forget he took him to IHOP. Right. Right? <laughs> took him to IHOP, fed him and everything. So, cause I, because she was we, still shopping. Because I was still shopping it. Mm-hmm. I had bars coming. Because I didn't, I knew we had to get the seller. The seller wasn't supposed to be there yeah. with the buyer. Yeah. So I told him to take him to IHOP. Go right. beat him. Then go give him the money. Yeah. I'm shopping at home. Like, I think it was five people that came that day right to see the home shopped on right and so he said he still he said he needed a little more time to get out of the home so after we gave him the cash another mistake we gave him the cash right another another big mistake and he said well i'll be out of there by the by the fifth of next month or something like that it was like toward the end of the month and when we bought when we gave him the money he said i need to like the first or second week of next month and i'll be out of there you know what i'm saying so anyway we sh- we finally found a concrete buyer for the home that wanted the home, right? Yeah. I'm just fast forwarding a little bit, like you know, we, yeah. we kind of yeah we we found a buyer for the home. Uh, we told him that the sell that the seller was starting to have seller remorse because we 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 was we understood that he was starting to have seller remorse because he wasn't yeah. packing his he wasn't stuff. Packing his stuff, yeah. He wasn't packing. And I was nothing, I was like man. trying to figure out what's going on. He here. had boxes in the house, but he wasn't packing them. I mean, the house looked like he wasn't going nowhere. Yeah, because he had a lot of stuff. Yeah, he had a lot of stuff in the house. So we like, dude, this, this dude ain't trying to go nowhere. He got, we done I gave know. him the money. We got the title. We had the title. We had the bill of sale. We had everything like that. But I didn't want to change the title in my name because we knew we was just going to find a buyer for the home mm-hmm. at the time. That was a mistake. I should have got the title. If I would have got the title in my name, no. we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now because it would have just went do, do, do. like a regular transaction, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. You so what happened to you about getting the t- could you put the title into your name or what did he do or what's the well we yeah. we could have but we was trying to hurt and find a buyer so we didn't have to pay the lot rent and we could just go ahead and give them the title. Oh man, so, so once we had to do that, when we told the my wife, bro, forgot about this part. We had him and the park manager that played against us. Yeah, the, so the, the seller, team. the seller yeah. and the park manager teamed up together. Yeah. To, yeah. to work against because us. Because remember, we, we, before yeah. the solid buyer, we had two solid buyers in the home. 
um, one side bar, he literally went to the office to fill out the lease and everything. I was there. I mean, the park manager grilled me to top to the bottom. Yeah, she wanted to know was you are you a realtor? Are you a broker? Are you this? Yeah. Are you that? Do you have your license? Do you have your broker like all this other stuff? That's, that's why what we, made that's it. what made us get the broker license. Uh -huh. That deal, that first deal was what made us get our, you know, our mobile home dealer license. You know what I mean? That's what made us get that. Yeah. Cause it's like, now nah, we're not dealing with this no more. We want to be able to, want, we, we, we found out Georgia was a zero state. We said from now on, no park managers are going to be able to turn us away over a piece of paper, you know, over, exactly. over a mobile home broker license. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when the other bar came about. So yeah. she, they were, that usually doesn't, they usually don't bring that up, but she was trying, or that manager, was trying to look for anything to either get anything. you out of the picture anything. or to anything. you. And when you signed the contract originally with this guy for 30, 3,700 or 30, yeah, 30, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you tell the manager anything? Did the manager know we about it? told the manager everything. <laughs> okay. Look, John, when we first got to the park, once again, transparency. Yes. We, I told the park man, I said, listen, we're looking for some mobile homes to fix and flip. We buy mobile homes. I told this to the same park manager, okay? She gave us a she home. She gave us a home. She told us, well, I don't have anything for sale. I said, I understand that. But I said, if I find something in the park, are you okay with us buying it and you know making some repairs and fixing it? She's, and they was like, yeah. And, and they, she said, matter of fact, I do have one home. I, no, she said, they didn't have it. She said, I think lot so-and-so is selling. They, is selling. You can go check out lot C24 or whatever it was. So we actually went to a home that she told us to go check out. That was the one. No, no, no. That was a different one. Yeah, okay. that was a different one. But that home didn't even exist. We went there and it was, they didn't have no for sale sign in the window. I don't even think, I think she was wrong about the number, yeah. but she probably did know someone was selling, but she just didn't know exactly which one it was or what happened. So they knew what we was, they, what we was doing in the park. She knew what we was doing, it, but she didn't know that we was closing exactly on that guy's home because he didn't want us to tell the park manager that he was leaving yet. He said, just wait. He said, wait until <laughs> we come to the final day of like, you know, the final day when I'm about to move out and then you can let them know that I'm leaving. He didn't want them in his business. He said, he said, I don't really want them in my business like that. So let's kind of keep it on the low type of thing. What was the real story? Was he behind on payments or anything like that? I don't, I don't know. I don't no, think I don't so. Think he just, so. he just didn't want them in, in his business because he like nobody in his business. He yeah. like people, the neighbors. So we got friendly with the neighbors and she would tell him like, yeah, you don't want nobody. Yeah. He didn't want the park in his yeah. business. So he wanted us to kind of keep the deal uh -huh. kind of quiet until it was really time to finalize everything. But we still let them know yes. before that we still ended up talking to the park manager and we said, listen, this guy is selling us. We didn't go behind his back, but it was, we let some time go by and it was like, okay, now it's time to let them know, listen, we're about to buy this home. Is everything okay with that? And yeah. that's when it kind of started. That's when everything started kind of turning up. Yes. It, yeah. it was crazy. If you know? you're going to have a relationship with the manager and the, the seller, you know, you want to keep that manager relationship much stronger or in a, yeah. yeah, go talk to that manager, maybe get approved at the park. Maybe not. There's so many investors that just, don't ever talk to the manager or they don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't do that. We, don't do yeah. that. we never do that. Yeah, we, we never did. We wanted to get approved by the park. We yeah. put an application in to get approved by the park. That was a that was one of our main things to get approved by the park first, make sure everything is on the up and up with that. But once again, she wasn't really the problem. Corporate was the problem. We had a concrete buyer. Yeah. We t I told this buyer from A to Z, too much information. I told him that you need to go put this title in your name ASAP. Exactly. Because this seller is having sort of remorse. Literally, and on the roof of our car, telling him what he needs to do. He waits till we got it. I think it was on Tuesday. We sold it, on the, we sold it to him on a Tuesday. He didn't go to He a, signed the title on the hood of the car. Yes. I told him, I was like, wait, I, you, you might want to wait before you sign the title. Just go to the D, the tag place and sign it inside the tag. He was like, he was like, I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to sign it right now. It's, it's cool. He signed the back of the title, which was fine. He was supposed to go to the DMV that same day or the, yes. the, the, the tag place that same day to switch the title over in his name. Yes. Okay. Had he done that, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. No. Because yeah. everything would have been fine. He would have had possession of the home. Because at that time, the, the corporate was wanting us to finalize that deal. Yeah, corporate was one of, they wanted yeah. us to fight. It was like, look, just go ahead and just do what y'all got to do. 
and just, you know, you guys bought the home, just do what you got to do, yeah. finish your transaction. It was one of those finish your transaction things again. Yeah. Like we're not really investor friendly, but just finish your transaction. Go ahead and finish your transaction. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was that one was of those the same, things. The same ownership, Stop. right? First same deal, ownership. second deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same ownership, same corporate, but different parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two different parks, you know. So anyway, the guy waited until Friday. Friday. He waited until Friday to go put the title in his name. When he get down there, he calls us and he said, they told me that somebody got a duplicate title. I can't put the title in my name. So yeah. I called the, I called the DNV uh, and I asked them, I said, can you please tell me when was that, that duplicate title issued? And they told me when it was issued, it was issued around around the same time it, it was he had enough time to put it in his name john fedger here i want to explain why the seller getting a duplicate title is such a problem and throws a monkey wrench into the whole issue and why it's so fraudulent this is something that always could happen so you want to make sure to transfer your title quickly because it's almost as if you've lost your credit card if you ever lost your credit card you call up your bank and then you say hey i, I lost it you know can i get a duplicate credit card they're not going to give you a duplicate they're going to issue a new credit card with usually a new number on it that's the same principle with a mobile home title the mobile home title that Andrew and Shaniqua had has one mobile home title on it these are a couple of mobile home titles with the uh, identification numbers the make and the model and the ages and also the title numbers if there is a new duplicate title issued on one of these mobile homes that old title is null and void so the original uh, title that the seller sold to Andrew and Shaniqua took their $2,500 now Andrew and Shaniqua have a signed title um, and it's and then they gave that to the next buyer it was an open title it wasn't signed by the buyer just yet um, and then they went ahead and gave it to the seller the seller waited a little bit too long to transfer it into his name Andrew and Shanika waited a little too long to transfer it into their name because the seller went to the DMV went to the title transfer department and said hey I'm assuming they said this hey I lost my title can I get a duplicate one the new title was issued with a different uh, a different title number making Making the old title that Andrew and Shanika had basically void, uh, which is completely illegal. You know, he knew what he was doing, was trying to cancel the deal while he already got paid and was now living in the home and really had no intentions of leaving. So that's why, you know, this is that's a big problem. This could always happen. Uh, I've never actually seen it happen where someone was so blatant and just, you know, OK, I'll take the money and I'm going to take the home as well. I hope that that really makes sense. OK, now back to the original video. Put it that way. Yeah, no time. Yeah, he had enough time. He had like a good day, a day and a half to two days to put it in his name after he purchased it. But he waited till Friday, and by that time, the buyer had went and got applied for a duplicate title. The seller went. The seller, I'm sorry, the seller. The seller had the seller had went and applied for a duplicate title. Yep. Was the seller he, still still in the home? He's still in the home. Yeah, we had. A, we had. I had to write up an eviction form yep. we called the sheriff we got the sheriff department involved um, we got the court we went down to the courthouse we tried to put an eviction out it's it's, it's still in litigation right now so you know. did you give the money back to the buyer because he didn't get no money. no we didn't get the money back to the buyer he, one of the reasons why we didn't first of all he knew he messed the, the buyer knew it was yes. his fault yes so he didn't even ask us for the money back he didn't even hint for the money back he was like because, like I said, Shaniqua broke the situation down to him from A to Z. Oh, wow. Bad management. The, she, she told him about the park manager. We told him about the seller. We told him the seller has seller's remorse, that he's really kind of like, he don't really want to leave out of the home. He's like, he can stay in the home as long as he paid me rent. I don't care. He can stay in the home. We right. told him, you need to go get this title in your name today. We told him really? all of that. I mean, like every, he was like, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm everything we said, he was okay. I with. was texting him. All right, please go get the title. In yeah, he, he, was, the title. he was well aware of John. He was well aware of everything from A to Z. And he still wanted to go forward with the transaction. He gave us the money. Okay. He, yeah, so he and gave us like, the money. Oh, I guess yeah, so, so, so legally, the mobile home is still his. It's yes, really his, it is, legally. Is he an investor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, okay. Yeah. You said yeah. he, okay, yeah, but he didn't know exactly what he was doing either. No, he didn't know. No, he was learning from us. He was learning from us. <laughs> we were learning so, still. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's, and it's still going on. It's still. Yeah, uh, but he's but he's a nice guy. I, really I want to say that he's a nice guy, and we yeah. still talk to him till like, we didn't burn him. 
Like we didn't write him off. I still talk to him. Sometimes I call him. Sometimes he called me and we kind of correspond about the situation and we ask, you know, have you heard anything? Yeah. Have you heard anything? So, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. I like the he guy. Is, he is, yeah. yeah. Who's yeah. paying law rent? The, the person that's living in there. Still. Well, we think who's still living in there. I yeah. think somebody else lives there. I think he's still living in there. I think yeah. the original owner is still living in there. Really? Because we rode through the park not too long ago and it's, wasn't his car still there? Oh, yeah, I think he's. I think he's still. I think he's still. I think he's. It's a big possibility he's still living in there. Probably so. But com <laughs> complete fraud. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that was a Just fraud. That was a, yeah, 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 fraud. But we, that's what made us know that we had to get a mentor. Yeah, we really knew. Yeah. And, yeah. And how many things just from that one deal did you learn as as far as now you go with people to the tag office and transfer yeah. the title? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You what? You talk to the manager. Yeah. It just amazes, it doesn't amaze me because people are shady and they, they do stuff like this, but where they can yeah. take your money, they can live in the home, they can talk to you to your face. Yeah, I'm moving, I'm moving, not moving. And you know, and then and then yeah, gets the duplicate title. Oh, sorry, what? Oh. Yeah, we, that's how I felt like we were, we were like a title. Uh, a title bond, yeah, like a bond, yeah. One of oh, them, uh, title loan, yeah, title yeah. loan. Yeah, right. oh, so he, he, title he loan. Did no, he want to give you the money? Did the seller want to give you the money back after they realized yeah, that they were going to stay? He, call, he called us on the day of closing. He called us the day we closed with the buyer, the end buyer. He's like, yeah, you know, I really, I want the home back. I want to, I said, well, listen, I said, well, can you give me all of the money that we gave you back, the $2,500 we gave you? Can you give me that back today? Today. I said, we, we, we're closing on this home today. So can you give me that money back today? He said, no, nah, if I can make payments, I can make payments <laughs> on it. No. I said, no, brother, it don't work like that. I said, you got until, I gave him a, a, a time frame. I think it was like, I don't know what time. I said, you got until X, Y, and Z time to give me the money back. And that's what put a bug in his ear that, oh, I'm just going to go down here and give me a duplicate title. See, we gave this, I gave the seller too much information. That was the problem. I should have kept him in the dark as far as what I was doing with my end buyer, like totally in the dark. I should have said, like, no, the, the home is already sold. The title is already, everything is already done. You can't do anything. That's not completely your fault, though. You can tell some some sellers exactly what you're doing, and they're mm -hmm. just thrilled to have your help. This exactly. guy wanted his cake. He wanted to eat it. He wanted to yeah. eat it again, have yeah. more cake. The house would look nice again. We painted. We did yard work to help. Really? So, you know, to help. Yeah, on the outside. Yeah, you know, to help yeah, us sell it. To help, you know, sell, to help it. us sell it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he played off all that, our yeah. weakness, our yeah. kindness. He, played, he, he took our off. kindness for as a weak for a weakness. Yeah. In. But the really thing is, is, he's not going to get the last laugh, John, because I don't see no judge in their right mind that's going to agree with what he did. No. No judge. I don't see any judge. When this, when this thing ends up in court, we got a paper trail from here to Texas. I told you that before. Yeah, we got we got bill of sales. We got agree buyer sellers agreements. We got emails. We got text messages. We got a paper trail from here I to took Texas, man. I screenshots of the text messages, and I got a nice yeah, little folder. Yeah, so we have a whole folder, a whole file on this on this transaction because I don't want to leave the buyer hanging like that. No. You know, the, the buyer no, has a of course not. the buyer yeah. the buyer really has like a soft spot with us to a certain degree at, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because the transaction didn't go right for him. Yeah. So I don't want to see him like just left like that. No. But me and him talked and he's told me, he's he's expressed to me, he's like, man, if I take a loss on it, it is what it is. I'm gonna just take it as a learning experience, yada, yada, yada. And that's because we were so transparent with him throughout the whole transaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah so. But the, I felt though at one point that don't make it make it seem like it was our fault. Because right. I kept telling him like that. I, if you're gonna talk to him, that's it, but that's fine. But don't keep talking about that deal because it wasn't our fault. Right. You know, we did we did all we could to make sure that he knew everything. I'm uh, what I mean. I made sure because I didn't want to stick with no one with something that I was trying to get out of. Yeah, you man. know, and it's just it wasn't right. But you know, man, you that deal was it was very stressful, but it was yeah. getting scary at the same time. It, it's still going on. It's still stressful. Still I would imagine. On, yeah. And it's not, well, not that much. I, I feel like since we because we've been doing so many other things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we yeah, still sorry. in court. We still gotta we waiting because of COVID. Once yeah. the once the whole COVID yeah, thing. I'm not talking about the stressful part. Of yeah, it. it's like, yeah. We're not stressed over it now because yeah. we don't learn so much now and yeah. be a lot more you know knowledgeable sleep, about man. certain things or whatever. But we it, we lost a lot of sleep we over were. that deal. I mean, I thought cops were coming yeah, to the house. Yeah, we lost a lot of sleep over that deal. That park yeah. manager was very unprofessional. 
Oh, and, you know, people were, yeah, were people yeah, threatening you, Shaniqua, about cops? Or yeah, something? yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it, it almost got physical. It almost got physical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because another somebody it's, in the yeah. office lied about something, and, and yeah, it so, almost got physical at the park, at the park, and at, at the office. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mobile home investing should not be this exciting <laughs> or this <laughs> like <laughs> drama. <laughs> you. Yeah, but like, that just lets you know that even though we that was our first deal, we could have easily been. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. We on yep. deal four. We on deal number four, four now. You know? yeah, about to close <laughs> yeah, and then and still trucking. And that's all with the kids with us. The kids in the car yeah. the whole time. Oh yeah. The, kid, the kids was in the car. Every every everything we just told you, the kids was in the car with us the whole time. <laughs> yes. oh, I love it. for better or for yeah. worse. Yeah. Every deal, every, every single deal. deal, the kid's been in the car from day one. Day one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, there were mistakes made on that deal, but he, the seller is the one that lied, manipulated. Like every, a lot of people dropped the ball, but he was the one that, if, it, if he was honest, it would have been, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would have still moved through. Let's, yeah. if we could, let's talk about the mistakes. Um, you, uh, you gave him all the money before he was out of the home. Yep. Yes. Maybe that big would have one. solved everything, actually. Maybe big uh, a big one. Uh, big I, think the title, I think the title would I think the title would have solved a lot of things because mm. he couldn't do nothing. We didn't transfer the title. We didn't transfer the title. Yep. It yeah. only takes seven days for a title to come in the mail. So we should have transferred the title immediately, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, not I, I feel like not shopping the home. When a seller is there, you gotta really try to. I know it's kind of hard to do that, but if you can try to do it when they're not there, because they can't have celebrity remorse too much. Because it's like, okay, it could for because in the process of taking so long, because you don't know how long it's gonna to take to sell a home. Um, and, and you know, the home had a lot of work that needed to be done in there. So I feel like that was uh, was a mistake on our part, always having a buyer there while he was there. Mm -hmm. I regret that we weren't talking more about this in the beginning because these mm -hmm. are these are things that are like you you were dangerous because you 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 had the motivation you had the fire inside of you both and you wanted to do something so bad that we just don't know what we don't know and you were right. you mm -hmm. did as best as you could and you tried to help the guy you were honest you were everyone's like me why you know this guy should be happy and like you said, it was worth 900 bucks, maybe, or 500 bucks. Right. The guy right. was getting way more than he deserved for the, for exactly. the home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it, it was definitely a learning experience. Oh, yeah. We learned, we learned more on that first deal than we learned probably on, since we've been doing mobile home investing. Yeah. I mean, we learned so much on that first that deal from best. the mistakes that we made on that first deal. That was the core. That was the core stuff right there. The foundation. Yeah. Of, um, of uh yeah man that, we was, that, so that much. mold does i feel yeah. like you know you know some people things at the beginning it's smooth for them and other people it's gonna it's rocky to groom them i felt that that's what we need to know to to be pushed and groomed yeah, and beat up, and beat up yeah. to really know we were ready um to really know um if this is something that we wanted to do, even do exactly because exactly. it was such a um so different from you know what we have been through before yeah um, so it, I think it, and then the second one was kind of, it was, well, it was rough, but I think that was just to mold us. Yeah. And that's the way I take it. Cause it really has. And now we on fourth deal, I feel like we crashed. I mean, yeah, we had been on the fourth yeah. deal and we would have, we dealing with a, a park manager that's actually working with us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, the, it's like night and day, right man. Day. It's like night when the park no manager, hiding. when the park manager is okay with you being in the park, you don't have to hide inside the park. You can. You know what I'm saying? We used yes. to, you know, we've had yes. to hide from the, you know, you don't want to have to do all oh. this. So they understand exactly what we're doing. She she wants us to be there. She's okay with us being there. We can stop in the office every day if we want to and just to say hi or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's like night and day, man. <laughs> seriously yeah. well done that was the first mobile home it sounds like that you were in, like you didn't even know it was a mobile home. That When you told right. me that, Shanika, right. that blew right. my mind. Like I that's similar to my first one. Like I went there and I'm like, this is a mobile home park. Like what? Yeah. But you were <laughs> yeah. so excited. I was like, wait, 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 what we got? Well, uh, this is not what I planned. It was this. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. deal was crazy, man. And yeah. you felt happy because you have to more should have like 
95 percent of it. I mean, just exactly. Yes. Uh, you couldn't tell we wasn't doing that until so when I saw it, we were like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. man, it was it was it was scary, man. I was like, I'll look out the window, somebody like, there. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. Rough. So we, you know, we we knew he had our address. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, oh my goodness, it yeah, was scary. It, was man. it could that one really could have got went really south because once he once, he once we that, once he did that and he he basically just like robbed us basically, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, I was like, I was scared. I was like, you know, you gotta stay home. We can't go to my house and stuff. You know, drag yeah. people out the house. You know, yeah, because you know, yeah. it got like yeah, that. it could have got real. Yeah, it could have got even with the end buyer. The end buyer could have got real physical with the guy too. Like this is my house now. As a matter of fact, he went to the house and talked to him after he purchased it yeah. with title in hand. He went to him and told him, hey, he knocked on the door. He said, hey, man, I bought this mobile home now. This is my mobile home now. I bought it. I purchased this mobile home. He told us. He told us what he did. Yeah. And the guy was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, uh, they left me in the dark. Everybody left me in the dark. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. That's what the like seller that. told him. He was like, listen, we need to talk because now you're living in my property. You know, yeah. So they actually had a conversation after he purchased the mobile home. They had a conversation about him about the fact that listen, this is not yours no more. It's mine now. You got to pay me rent. That's when he said he told the guy we can work something out. The guy's a liar. Anything that comes out of that seller's mouth is like worth nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Man, I, so just a, yeah, I can't wait faster. when it's actually completed. Yeah. And I really, you know, I feel like I know it's completed, but you know, it's still that over our head it's like it's not done yet you yeah. know and once it's that that um buyer can really get his property and ran it out the way he wanted to yeah and, you know yeah, be, you'll be there with popcorn when they when the sheriff yeah. comes and pulls him out yeah. of that house yeah <laughs> yeah yes. i hope exactly. he still don't go through anything but if he do i'm, I'm like nah, i'm yeah. out of you got that's, that's gonna be now. that's really gonna be a nice uh site to see you know to get, yeah. get that to get just to give i just wanted the rightful owner to get his property that's right, right. That's Right. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you so much for this. I, I'm pretty sure we've scared everybody off of off of the video right now. <laughs> no one's stuck around this line. They're like, nope, I'm out of. <laughs> I don't want any part of this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I know, right? It's not. It's not. The one thing you gotta know about mobile home investing is it's not always gonna be glitter and gold. Yeah. It's yeah, not. Yeah. You gotta get down and dirty, and you don't want to get down and dirty. Ew, ew. Yeah, and you might as well go ooh, ooh, somewhere else because yeah, it's, it's work, man. It's work. work. A lot of people talk about all the victories and a lot of you know the glitter and the glamour, but it's work, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I be, I be yeah, like kind of, kind of trying to figure out a balance with that because he likes to just tell everybody from I mean all of it. And I'm like, no, you yeah, gonna scare I, I like away. to tell people the truth <laughs> about what the truth about what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And let people because a lot of times you see people posting online. They show you all the money they made off the mobile home what deals that they did, through. but they didn't tell you what they went through, you know what I'm saying, to get to the finish line, you know what I mean? So it's not always, you know, it's, it's work. It's you dangerous know? to do that, to get people hyped up or to get like only sell the good, the good stuff. 90% of this business is the boring stuff or the stuff that is not sexy or the thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. But, that's so true. You, you know, can, and, and I tell the kids that all the time. Yeah. You know, it, it takes work. Yeah. Uh, being an entrepreneur, it takes yeah. work. You're going you to definitely face your fears in this business. That's oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah you're going to face your fears in it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. And it'll either, those fears will win or you'll, or you'll win. Mm -hmm. One or the you other. You got to get your Andrew podcast. <laughs> yeah. What? Do you, do you have your own podcast? Yeah, 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 I got a little song. Yeah, song, yeah. Uh, he called it uh, fear, fear, less, fear, fear Less Thrive More. Yeah, yeah, it's on there. yeah Fear Less Thrive More. Because that's something that I struggle with. Me yeah. personally, I struggle with, you know, fears on a deep level. You know what I'm saying? Till this day, you know what I mean? So it's always, I, I'm always trying to see how can I cross the, get over the, the hurdle of, of a lot of these different fears. You know what I mean? Because yeah, like I know if I can fear less, I can thrive more. You know what I mean? I love that. Mm -hmm. that's and I had that issue though, not for say, Cause I'm a go get out. I'll, I'll just jump right in, and then I'm like, oh, I was scared. Oh wow, I just did that. But mine was a fear of if I can be successful. Mm -hmm. Mine was that like I have the urge, like oh, I have the urge to 
do this. Right. I want to do this, um, but mm, that don't fit me. And yeah. I had to tell myself, what do you mean they don't fit you? But that was that fear talking and not realizing you, you can have the whole, you can have that feeling with you. Exactly. Have that feeling, have that bag go, with you, but still go. Oh. You know, and it'll go, it'll go away. Yeah. Wow. That's so true. Ooh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> That's so true. We're all dealing with fear. Like if your life is too comfortable and you're not discom like putting yourself in discomfort by pushing yourself and growing and learning, I, I mean, I guess everyone's life, you can do what you want, but that's, you should be. I mean, that's, that's how we learn and grow. And in a comfort zone, we don't, we don't really grow that much. And I love, you said like you hold on to that fear, but you keep going and you try to get educated or do your best. And wow, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so true. Um, yeah. And we're all like, we're adults. We're supposed to have it all figured out, but no, no right. we're still going through. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to realize you, like I was telling, um, Andrew, a couple of days ago, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I, I'm I, starting to feel like we're our just grown babies, mm -hmm. right? And the only reason why I say grown babies is because we still need things just like a baby. Mm -hmm. um, I was like saying how a child, how a child still, want, they love affection, to be kissed all over and, and hugged and loved. A man and a woman still wants that. Mm -hmm. They just develop our time that they don't want that things happen in their life they cause it to be in a shell mm -hmm. but in reality they want someone to touch them they want someone when someone actually do it they'd be like whoa that that was amazing mm -hmm. oh oh i got touched or whatever case may be mm -hmm. or you know you can do it i'll oh, go ahead and somebody telling them rooting them on and we hear people say don't let don't worry about nobody rooting them on or who you on y yeah but as a child wants you to do that yeah I, so I said, we're just grown babies. <laughs> In so many different ways, you're right. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, and if we forget that, still mm -hmm. treat me as sometime, you know, all the time, you don't be coddling me because I ain't going to be able to go to work. But, you know, but hold me, you know, or, you know, be there. Yeah. You know, because that's a lot of times we forget that. Absolutely. Still be a friend to that person because your child or that child wants you to be their friend. He wants you to hold them. An adult wants that too. And to the end of the day, adult wants that. Absolutely. What a good, what a, what a thing to try to like implement. I'm going to start doing that for 2021. Yeah. I'm going to start looking at people as their, you know, younger selves mm -hmm. to just be, exactly. to not put so much not pressure, but not to put so much maybe weight or like. Mm -hmm. Yes, a, 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 we put too to much really on adults. Mm -hmm. We really do. We put too much on mm -hmm. people, and then we get disappointed. Mm -hmm. But if you look at that person, that this person is actually delicate, like a child, delicate, you know, it's soft. Not all the time. You got people that's you know rough, but you 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 fill it out, you know. But generally, people just want you to still treat them like they're you know like, mm -hmm. like a child. With that kindness, of, right? Because you give you give a child with so much kindness, you go to their level. And you, wow. how, how are you? Uh, no, how you took yourself, and you know all these different things. Yeah. <laughs> Patient, kind. I guess that's the alarm that our time. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs want to be out, or they want food, or something. Yeah. Yeah. That I but love yeah. that last part. Seriously, that's something that we all need to remember. Uh, yeah, really day to day, like that's that's huge. I wish we had another hour to talk about that. And this went way longer than I expected. Thank you I so know, much. Right? I told y'all that. First, I, I know, that. I know. We were trying to even to go past. Uh, mm -hmm. I told that. My fault. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm starting to see that. Uh, you know, and I, you know, tell myself that. You can just because he's a man does not mean he doesn't want to be treated like I treat his sons. Like most you of them. Wow. And we all throw, we are, we're all p petty at times or throw tantrums sometimes or don't understand or, but we no, got this hard this normal. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. hey, y'all need it more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's probably a good spot to end it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying, I, I think as adults, we really need to teach to that more you know on both ends yeah because yeah, it actually will probably right. help with your spouse you know succeeding mm -hmm. 
exactly. in all relationships. This business is relationships. Life is relationships. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Be talking to how we talk to ourselves is a relationship. I beat myself up all the time. I wouldn't talk that way to a kid. I get thrown right. in jail or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Seriously. Uh, Again. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're not going, we'll be talking obviously just as much as ever, but thank you so much again for hopping on the call today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Thank appreciate you. it.